Session 2, Sumerian Civilization, 7,000 to 6,000 years ago. Part 3, The Devil, Tiamat. As we have briefly examined the crescent orb symbol of spring equinox, the fish man symbol of winter solstice, and the river symbols of autumnal equinox, we should also examine the symbolism of Tiamat. Tiamat's earliest depictions are as upright walking, four-legged snakes with wings, frequently seen wearing crowns. Here we see twin Tiamats of this form holding twin corsair swords by the blades towards a single serpent coiled around itself in six loops with a head at both ends of its body. Just as the male doll from the earliest Uruk period depicted the same elongated head motif as the fish priests of Chaldea, so too does the female counterpart of that doll exhibit very similar facial features to a reptile, such as a serpent. She holds a small baby to her breast, and the baby appears to have horns. The reptilian motif has long been a symbol for Tiamat, in this Uruk period carving of a life-scale mask, we find the same reptilian features as the serpent symbolizing Tiamat. Just as Tiamat, symbolized by the winged, four-legged dragons encaging the twin-headed serpent, guards the tree of life, so are their guardians over the tree of knowledge. While the tree of life was symbolized by the twin-headed serpent, the Tree of Knowledge is a complex geometrical arrangement of 13 blossoms on a vine lattice around a central blooming trunk. While the guardians of the 15 flamed arched doorway were the fish-robed men symbolizing winter, the guardians of the 13 blossoming Tree of Knowledge are garbed as birds with the head of the phoenix and two wings. They water the Tree of Knowledge and pick the blossoms from it, and just as the dragons ensnaring the double-headed snake of the Tree of Life, these anthropomorphized avians also represent Tiamat. To return to the doings of the god while he sat on his cubic throne and was not riding the sky in his Faravarhar Vimana, when we finally see him equaled in stature, it comes from this low relief from Lagash. On one side sits the god, offering in his outstretched right hand the ring and the rod symbolizing kingship. On the opposite side sits a goddess, wearing the same form of turban crown as the god, reaching out to receive the offering with her left hand. Between them grows a single enormous potted leaf. Note that the god holds back his scepter flail. Next, we see another extremely ancient cylinder seal imprint dating from six to 7,000 years ago. We see on the far right a tree with eight branches, each with one leaf. To the left of this tree sits the goddess on her cubic throne, wearing a crown of crescent horns. She holds in her lap a young child with a single long forelock of hair. Below the child at the goddess's feet is a pit dug in the ground. On the opposite side of this pit from the goddess stands a man with short hair and no beard offering up a cup. Behind this man on the far left is another man kneeling down to adjust the lid atop a canister that sits on a short tripod platform. Above this is a shelf with three narrow vases on it. In this mid to late Akkadian cylinder seal, we see all these elements depicted in one scene. On the outermost flanks are the twin, bird-headed and winged men representing Tiamat. They apply their blossoms to the fish priests, who in turn apply the river symbols from the god above to a fifteen-stemmed, newly budding tree. Above in the center, we see again the god in his Faravarhar Vimana, now facing the opposite direction he was, when he arrived to be greeted by the fish priests. Here is a later post-Babylonian cylinder seal inscription showing four epic heroes, each alike Gilgamesh in facial appearance, kneeling to hold up standards bearing the symbols of the four seasons. 
On the left, we see the orb form of Tiamat symbolizing summer, the water symbol representing autumn, the fish man symbolizing winter, and the crescent symbol representing the return once again to spring. A rising serpent marks the end and restart date per annum. As we shall see, the use of animalistic symbols to signify the four elemental seasons was a precursor to the Babylonian Dendara zodiacs as well as Egyptian and Mesoamerican hieroglyphics and began a trend that has not stopped since. Here we see the Ishtar Gate of Babylon erected 2,575 years ago. It is decorated with low reliefs of bulls signifying summer, lions with their tails up or down representing spring and autumn, and representing winter we come back again to Tiamat. In this image from a Sumerian cylinder seal at least some 5,000 years old, we see the god standing upright on the left identified by his beard. He displays the gesture of supplication toward Tiamat, depicted as a four-legged serpent. On Tiamat's back is a platform or saddle, in the middle of which stands an erect pillar or column, at the top of which is a triangle pointing upward. The combined height of Tiamat and this pillar is equal to the height of the upright standing god. From a pre-Babylonian cylinder seal, we imprint this image, showing the god on the left, identified by his beard and turban crown, drawing back a bowstring to shoot an arrow toward a winged Tiamat, who appears on the right, rearing back on its hind legs. The image of Tiamat resembles a combination of the four-legged serpent, lion, and bull motifs. Between the god and Tiamat, above the trajectory of the arrow, sits the winged disc motif of Ahura Mazda's Faravarhar. Beneath this, between the god and Tiamat, is a crowned and bearded supplicant, surrounded in a sphere offering three small orbs toward the god. The battle between the god and Tiamat is further depicted in this low-relief cylinder seal from the Akkadian Empire era. The god in the upper left shoots his arrow toward Tiamat, seen in mid-retreat, aimed directly at Tiamat's head. Again, we see Tiamat as an exospecies of zoomorph, resembling a combination of avian and reptilian characteristics, with feet and wings like a bird, and the torso and head of a snake. Behind Tiamat's turned head, in the direction of its body's retreat, we see a seven-rayed orb above, and below an eleven-petaled arc. Beneath the feet of the god crouches a griffin, that is, a winged lion, which may depict the god's Faravarhar from the side. In this low-relief carving from the era of the first Babylonian Empire, Tiamat appears again on the retreat from the god, however here their positions are reversed from left to right. Tiamat, on the left, looks over its winged shoulder at the god, on the right, who is chasing after Tiamat, carrying a bundle of three arrows in each hand. Tiamat appears as a combinatory zoomorph again, with the head of a bull, the neck of a snake, the front paws and torso of a lion, the back legs and two wings of a bird. The god appears with one foot off the ground, his customary beard and crown, and four wings. Here we see Tiamat as a combinatory zoomorph, again from the Babylonian wall carving. Note the manneristic attention paid to the thumbs on its front paws. The nails or claws on them are crooked. Here we can more clearly see Tiamat has the horns of a bull, the belly of a snake, and the back of a bird. Its snarling face appears in great detail with an emphasis on its bat-like nostrils and fangs. This statuette from the Akkadian Empire period shows a character very similar to Tiamat. This mixed zoomorph has the legs of a ram or goat, male genitalia, the paws of a lion, four wings, 
and the hairless head of a snarling lion. This statuette represents Pazuzu, the demi-god of the southwest wind. There are similar miniature busts from this era that show Pazuzu in greater detail, with three concentric circles for eyes, an upturned nose like a pig, shallow cheeks, and a menacing set of fangs. Other zoomorphs include lion-headed upper torso busts with the neck and front legs of a dragon. As we see in this circular arrangement of glyphs from Babylonian Chaldea, the zoomorphs cataloged by the people of this era included an array of familiar animals alongside representations of combined trait beasts. We see in this zodiac a snake, a bird, a turtle, two beehives, a dog, and a scorpion. We see also three orbs, from left to right a crescent, a four-point star emanating four wave symbols, and an eight-point star. We see also two griffiths. All of these catalog symbols of Tiamat.